Good morning. A very warm welcome to all our viewers today on our live board broadcast. Uh, my name is Kevin and I'm from Revival Center and it's my privilege today to bring the word to you. Today we're going to be uh, looking at Acts chapter 13 and 14 as you've heard. And uh, before we start and go any further, I'd just like to open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you that you are good and that you go before us. Thank you that you're our fighter, our defense, and Lord, you're our protector. And today I ask that you would open up our ears and our hearts, that we may hear the word, and Lord, that we may not take offense by it, but Lord, we would uh, look within ourselves, and where change needs to be made, Lord, I pray that you would change us. And Lord, where we need to be humble, that we would be humbled, and where we would be needing strength, that we would be strengthened. Father, may we go today Go away today, different and changed, because we have met with you. So thank you for this time. Speak to us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. So we've been reading and uh, going through a study as a church, the book of Acts, and we're on Acts chapter 13 and 14 already. Wow, that is amazing how quickly time passes us by. So from the readings that have already uh, you've heard today, we see that in the passage that Paul and his disciples came under a lot of attack as they preached the gospel, as they brought the news of the good news of Jesus to the people. Some agreed, some believed in the word, uh, but many were just plain hostile and violent towards the disciples, to the extent that they even stoned Paul with the intent to killing, to killing him and thinking that he was dead. You know, and uh, as, I, as, as I've heard and received the good news myself, I wonder why people would be so hostile to the message of love, to the good news. The word gospel itself means good news. And why would someone be against good news? Imagine I bought myself a, a, a new piece of land and I went to go and tell people, this is what I've done. And they stoned me because of the good news that I told them. It just doesn't make sense to me. But we know as believers that we are in a in a battle we're in a war and it is not a normal battle because the bible tells us in ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places and in matthew 10 22 it says and you will be hated by all for my name's sake but he who endures to the end will be saved. People don't understand this good news. They may hear it, but they don't understand it. And uh, they may become hostile to it. And God has, and Jesus has already warned us and has told us of these things to come. In Romans 8 chapter 7, it says, Because the carnal mind is enmity, which means at war against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be? The world is at war against God. And we need to understand these principles uh, when we go out there and share the good news. In John chapter 16, verses 1 and 3, it says, These things I have spoken to you, that you should not be made to stumble. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God's service. And these things... They will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. The word that we give is powerful. It is, it, it is in the spiritual realm a, 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 a weapon. And the enemy knows it. So therefore he sets people against us. He sets principalities against us. And when we do share the good news or live out as Christians, uh, we find that we will. We will come into conflict we all have our own giants, like Paul and the disciples. We all have our own giants. David stood before his giant, who was, uh, who was blaspheming God and who was speaking out against Israel. He stood before him and he faced his giant. And we know from Scripture that he defeated the giant. But we all have People our can giants. be nasty. We see this in history and we see it now, that people generally can just be horrible to one another. And for me, um, I, I just struggle with that. 
I struggle why we need to interfere with other people's lives and, uh, and, and just be horrible to one another. It's not what God wants, it's not what Jesus came for, and it's not as something that us as believers should be doing. But people are people, and uh, we see it every day. We see it in the lives of our children. We see how they bicker and fight. If there's one thing that really um, upsets me is when my children fight over trivial things, silly things, over uh, there may be a toy in the house that no one's played with for weeks and then suddenly one finds it, picks it up and now both of them must have it. And they fight and scratch over it and, and, and just be, can become plain nasty to one another because they want this toy which was not even uh, considered for the last three or four weeks. Why do we do these things? You know, why do people have to be nasty to one another? And there are many reasons that people are nasty and many of them are based on probably a lack of understanding. Understanding who the other one is and, and what they're feeling and, and what they, they, they know and where they've come from. It may be a sense of pride and we're nasty because we, we're too proud or, or we think we're better than other people. It could be selfishness that causes us to be nasty and sometimes even a degree of entitlement because we're the boss, we're entitled and we're allowed to be mean and to be nasty. You know, if you've been following the news, um, you've probably seen one of the news breakers uh, that has been hitting the media at the moment, and that's been the senseless killing of a, of a black gentleman in America uh, by a white policeman. And that's taken the news by storm and people up in arms about, uh, about this act, the senseless act. And yes, it is. But why do it? What, what gets into the heart of people to do such a thing? You know, so today, uh, you know, we, as we, we look at the, the, the disciples and, and how they were attacked and how they were mobbed and how, how they uh, faced uh, hard times, you know, what is it that causes it? So today I'm not going to speak on racism, uh, but what I feel is very similar and could very well be the same thing. And that's the issue of bullying. The disciples here were bullied by the religious Jews. And today many of us are bullied as believers. And some of us even not as bully, uh, believers. There's a lot of bullies out there. You might say, Kevin, bullying, this is not a subject that needs to be spoken from the pulpit, but maybe from the plectern at school in, a, in, a, in, a, in an assembly or something like that. But you know what? It's not only children that suffer as bullies or under bullies, but also adults. So today I, I truly believe that uh, this is an area that God wants to speak to us as a community and as a people as we look out at the world and say, you know, what is our role as individuals, as believers? You know, are, are we bullies ourselves? And how do we respond to bullies? And then how can we make a difference? And how can we withstand in these times? You know, bullying, the, the, the dictionary tells us that bullying is abuse and mistreatment of someone's, uh, someone vulnerable by someone stronger and more powerful. When someone who is perceived as stronger and more powerful or he has greater position um, is nasty or pushes his weight around, that is called bullying. And you know who the number one bullier is? It's the devil. The Bible tells us that he... he, 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 he prowls around like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. That sounds like a bully to me. There are many types of bullying. And, uh, and, and I'm just uh, not going to go through all of them, but I'm just going to quickly touch on, on four different types of bullying uh, as we, we move along uh, this morning. The first one is physical bullying. We all know that one, right? That's the punching, that's the biting, that's the scratching that's the pushing, that's the, the shooting, um, that's the, the imprison, imprisoning, that's the torturing, all those sorts of things. That's uh, just the nasty one. That really is, you know, and um, that's the first the one. The second one, one is verbal bullying. Now, verbal bullying, we know, it, it includes insults, teasing, intimidation, cursing bringing people down 
We, many of us are guilty of verbal bullying. Sometimes I would rather take a, 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 a smack in the face than someone saying nasty, something nasty to me. I remember once when I, when I was a kid, um, I, was, <laughs> I was a bit of a clown at times. And the, and the one time when a guy went to the toilet, I got out my prit and I, and I started uh, pritting his pages together. So then when he got back from the toilet, he found out that like, 10 or, or 15 pages of his had been stuck together. And uh, he was irritated and he gave me a good punch. And, and I never retaliated back because I, I deserved it and I knew it. You know, and that was physical and I don't think it was bullying. But uh, for me, that I, I would much rather take a, a physical beating than a, a verbal uh, abuse. Some people would say that verbal abuse isn't as bad, but for me, it, it cuts straight to the heart and can affect someone for much longer than a physical beating. The third one is social bullying. Now, social bullying, sometimes referred to as COVID bullying, is often harder to recognize and be, can be carried out, carried out behind the bully, bully person's back. It is designed to harm someone's social reputation and or cause humiliation. Social bullying can include lying and spreading rumors. And we see this in Acts 14, chapter 2, where it says, But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their mind against the brethren. When you've got some bullies out there, they poison the minds of those who really aren't even thinking about the subject. They're just going along with life and the next minute someone steps in and poisons their mind. That's all part of social bullying and bullying nonetheless. How about negative facial or physical gestures, menacing or contemptuous looks? Your parents, we're good at that with our children. Sometimes we don't even need to say a word. We just need to give the look and then our children shudder under our iron fist. Some of you wives know very well the look from your husband that says, wait until we get home. And see what happens. You know, and that's all part of bullying. How about playing nasty jokes or embarrassing people and humiliating them? Mimicking, mimic, mimicking sorry, unkindly. Encouraging others to socially exclude someone else. Ganging up on people. And uh, that's all part of bullying. And that's not called for and that's not part of, of uh, the life that we've been uh, we meant to have as believers. The fourth one isn't biblical because it wasn't invented then, and that's cyberbullying. The cyberbullying research center defines cyberbullying as intentional and repeated harm inflicted through the use of computers, phones, and other electronic devices. We see our children are more subject to this. They may have thought, "Yay, I'm getting off the playground for the next two months." Uh, because of the bullies, but then they get the bullying follows them home through text messages, through meanness, through people ganging up, through posts that are put up um, on, uh, on the internet, on Facebook, that can really damage and hurt one's reputation and also uh, just destroy them and make them feel worthless. Many different types of bullying out there that we are subject to and also that we, can, that we are a part of if we're not careful. You know, why, why bully? Why bully? Why can't we just worry enough about our families in loving them and, and doing what we usually do? But why bully? And, and, and that boggled my mind. And there's a few reasons why, why I found out um, why people bully, which I'm just going to run through quickly. And, and I think it's good as believers to recognize some of these reasons why people bully. So that we can pray for them in that area. So that we can counsel them. That, so that they can too recognize why they act in such a way. And then, um, then hopefully they can change that behavior. The first one is insecurity and feeling powerful, uh, powerless. When an individual feels this way, they may encourage, they may engage in bullying to bring others down to their perceived level. They try to make themselves happy by making others unhappy. Similarly, when an individual feels powerless in his own life, it may trigger bullying. A bully feels powerful 
when intimidating others. This is why many children from dysfunctional homes engage in bullying. Someone who struggles with feeling insecure is afraid of appearing weak in front of others. In an effort to hide their own weakness, they do their best to find and expose the weakness in someone else. When you're feeling weak, you want others to feel weak too. Or you want to make yourself feel strong by pushing someone else down. That's called bullying. That's called being really mean. You know, so uh, the second one that I want to bring to you is the need to control. The need to control is one of the top reasons why people bully. And there can be many reasons why a person needs to feel more in control. We all love to be in control. We all love to know that we have our stuff together. And if we've got our stuff together, we feel we can operate a lot better. So when someone comes in, and uh, I think that was the problem with the Jews uh, preaching the gospel, the others felt that the, they were losing control of the people. They were losing control of those that they had in their congregation. They were going to lose them to this other truth, this other good news. So they wanted them to remain with them, so they bullied the others out. And sometimes when we want to put our point across, we need to bully it across. Because if, if we find out that we're wrong, then we have got to say sorry. And so we'd rather, instead of saying sorry, we would rather bully our way into, uh, into keeping our situation safe or what we believe to be safe. I believe this, this is rooted in fear. If we just humble ourselves... And say, you know what, I could be wrong. I'm weak in this area, please help me. We want to remain strong and we bully people into doing what we want them to do. The third reason why people bully is because it's rewarded. The, they, someone bullies once and they see that there's a benefit in it because it, uh, it yielded some good results for them. So that... Um, so then it reinforces their behavior and they bully again. And then they get into the habit of bullying. A child, for example, at school bullies someone into giving them their break. Then that for them is, yes, that worked for me. So tomorrow I don't need to bring break. I just need to bully that person into giving me their break too. It doesn't only work at school. It can work at a national level too. Where people can bully others into paying more taxes than due. And, and, and whatever the case is, you know, and uh, when, they, when their behavior is rewarded, it, is, it encourages others to, to join in, which is also a very dangerous so situation. So the fourth reason why people bully is because they've been bullied themselves. We learn through past experiences or we learn from our parents. And we often find that children who are bullies have parents who are bullies. And those parents are probably bullies because their parents were bullies. That's called an iniquity and it's passed down like many generational sins. So if you're a bully, maybe it's time to break that iniquity. Maybe it's time to stop so that your children themselves won't be bullies. Maybe if you have a problem with racism, you got it from your parents. And maybe they got it from their parents. Maybe this is the generation where that stops. So, as I've gone through those four, the next question I'm going to ask us, or the first question I'm going to ask us, is there any chance that you are a bully? Is there any chance that you are the giant in someone else's life? I'm going to ask you some questions. So how do you treat your employers? How do you enjoy, uh, treat your employees? How do you speak to your maid or your garden boy? And how do you speak to the person at the till who gets it wrong? How do you treat the waiter or the waitress when you're at the restaurant and they bring your food and it's cold or they are a little bit late in bringing your order? How do you speak to them? How do you treat them? You know, do you speak to them with respect? Or do you speak to them as if they just part of the furniture, as part of the service? They're human beings too. Your housemaid who lives in your home, she is a human being too. She has feelings, just as you have. 
How do you speak to them when they come late to work? Yes, we should be on time, but how do you speak to them? There are ways and means of speaking to people. You can bully them or you can do what's right. You know, and, and a big one for me is, is seniors in high school. How do you treat your juniors? You know, we think here in Zimbabwe, we, we've come, come through this tradition that seniors bully the juniors. And seniors often think that it's their right to bully the juniors because they themselves were bullied and they're now in a position to do so. I'm going to challenge you to break that cycle. I'm going to challenge you seniors, uh, you know who you are, to break that tradition. Start to love and to care and to nurture for your juniors. Start a new cycle. Start a godly system within your schools. There's nothing worse than getting to high school and, and feeling scared already to find seniors picking on you. That is so evil. That is so not what God has called us to do. He's called us to lead compassionately and with love. So I'm going to challenge you to throw away what you think is your right to bully seniors and to, to change your mindset because God would be pleased with that. God would really be pleased with that. And I think that, that, he, would, um, that he would honor you in that decision. You will come, against, you'll come up against uh, a lot of opposition as your friends would ridicule you for not following uh, the tradition. But I would encourage you to stand strong and be different. You know, instead of pulling the junior out of the line uh, at the tuck shop, eventually when we get back to school, instead of pulling him out the line, maybe bringing a junior in front of you and letting him get the chance to get served before you. That's what Jesus would do. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords washed their disciples' feet. It wasn't the other way around. And us as seniors, we think that when we get to become seniors, the juniors must wash our feet. No, wash their feet. The world is upside down when you become a Christian. And let's just honor the Lord and Savior. So how do you treat people when you're in a position of power? I'm going to get personal now to husbands. How do you treat your wife? Are you a bully to your wife? Do you verbally abuse her? Do you physically abuse her? That's pure evil. Imagine it was the other way around. Imagine you were being bullied. Imagine you were being beaten up or verbally abused at home. How would you like it if that happened to you? It needs to stop, especially if you're a believer and you claim to be a seeker and a follower of Jesus Christ. There is no room for, for physical abuse in the homes. It's pure evil. You know, and, and also wives too can bully their husbands into doing things and manipulating them by withholding intimacy from them. That's bullying too. And wives too can verbally abuse their husbands. It needs to stop if we are believers in Jesus Christ. And how do you treat your children? Do you love them or do you rule with an iron fist? Do you beat them? Sometimes I believe children need to get a, a, a hiding when, uh, when, it, when the hiding is due. But if you just do it out of frustration or to get them to do things that you want to do, that's bullying and that's evil. And that needs to stop in your homes. Because as believers, we need to be, um, we need to be showing love, compassion, and the things God has called us to do. You know, even Peter, he spoke to the elders. And uh, in, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 2 and 3, it says, Shepherd the flock of God, which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for the dishonest gain, but eagerly, not, uh, says, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples of the flock. He's saying, guys, don't bully your flock. And I pray that we don't bully you. I pray that we lead you uh, and we show we lead by example because that's what God wants us to do. So my question to you this morning is and my challenge to you is how do you treat other people? And how are you responding to other people of different race, different age, 
You know, and as, as adults, we need to be kind to the young ones. Not, not nasty. And not bullies, that's for sure. So how do we respond as believers? And how do we behave? I'm going to read through a few scriptures here just to, uh, to give us some guidelines. In Romans 12, verses 18, it says, If it is possible, as far as depends on you, it says, live at peace with everyone. So we call to live at peace as far as, as depends on me. So I'm not going to bully my way. I'm going to love and I'm going to live at peace with other people. And it's not only my peace that's important. It's the peace of other people too that is really important. We want them to be at peace too. When they go to bed, do they go to bed in fear? Or do they go to bed knowing that you're a loving father? That you're a loving mom? That they can wake up safe in that home because you're the head of it. In 2 Timothy 2.23 it says, But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that these generate strife. So don't argue with bullies unnecessary. Don't argue with one another, which creates turmoil and which creates um, anger and, and can sometimes turn volatile. And um, number uh, the third scripture I want to bring is Romans 12 verses 9. It says, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil and cling to what is good. So we need to love all people without hypocrisy. That means we need to love the Africans, the Indians, the Europeans, the Americans, the Chinese. We need to love everyone without hypocrisy and abhor what is evil and cling to what is good. As believers, we meant to, it says there in Matthew 29, 28 verses 19, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. We're meant to go and love and disciple all nations. That means all nations are equal under God's, uh, in God's eyes. And, uh, and, and we've got to treat them with love and respect. In John 13, 34, it says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. It doesn't say bully one another as I have bullied you, that you may bully one another. It says love. We call as believers to love one another. What does that look like? What does that look like to you? Jesus sacrificed and laid down his life for a brother, for his friend. Are you prepared to lay down your old habits, lay down your, your, your mind thoughts, your, uh, the, the way that you used to think and start to love people? Are you prepared to do that this morning? In Acts 17 verses 26, and it says, And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth. He made us from all one blood. Guess what? We all have red blood within our bodies. We are all made one by God. So whether you're yellow, black, or white, you are precious in his sight. And we need to start treating each other as equals. And we need to start loving one another. In Matthew 5 verses 43 to 45 it says, You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. You know what? We're called to love our enemies. So you, you, you love your friends, you got to love your enemies. So those you feel you have the right to bully, you don't. You are called to love them because God first loved us. As believers, we are to stand up for those who are bullied. If you have a neighbor who beats his wife, I believe it's our job as Christians to stand up. And to go and protect that wife. I believe it's our job to say something. We can't just turn a blind eye to bullies. We've got to go in there and we've got to make a difference. 
I remember a story of uh, one of our old youth leaders. He was on his way home from dropping children from youth and uh, he came across a husband who was beating up his wife in the middle of the street at night. So he stopped the car to confront the man and the man came to attack him and he didn't know what to do. So he started praying in tongues. This guy got like a meter away from him, froze and fled. So you, you got to do something. I believe we've got to stand up for injustice. We've got to come and stand and confront the bullies. David confronted Goliath. He stood and he looked him in the eye, confronted him, and Goliath fell that day. I believe that we need to do just that. And we see too that Paul stands up to a bully in our scripture today in Acts 13 from verses 6 to 11, if you want to read with me. It says, it says, And when they had gone through the island to Patmos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus, who was with the proconsul, Paulus, an intelligent man. This man called for Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. But Elamias the sorcerer, for so his name is translated, withstood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. So here was a guy who's bullying them socially. And then Paul, sorry, it says, then Saul, who is also called Paul, now, this is the key point here when we stand up against a bully to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It says, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him. And he said, <laughs> I love this, O full of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil. He says, you enemy of the righteous, you will not cease pervert, will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord? So, you know what? He said it as, as it was. Bullies need to be told. Stop it. You, you're bullying. That's not right. I remember one of my favorite stories. I used to get bullied when I was in, in grade 7. There was this guy every day. He would punch me in the back when we were in line. Or he would take my pencils. He really just, he, he just was a lousy guy. And uh, he picked on me day in and day out. And by the time we got to uh, this, the, the rugby season, I went to practice. And, uh, and uh, before the, the coach came, we would set up the rugby ball. Those who played rugby and been to practice know what I'm talking about. We had set up the ball and we had chances at converting or see if we could kick the rugby ball between the, the posts. And uh, I had set the ball up. I waited my turn and I was running to kick the ball. And this bully came through. And kicked the ball in front of me. And out of ref reflex, I hadn't even thought about it. I just lashed out and I punched this guy in the stomach. And then I realized who it was. And this guy came at me. And uh, as he came at me, I'd, I'd done a couple of lessons of judo. I grabbed him by the shoulders. I threw him down on the ground. And I had him in a headlock. And then I just started punching. This is not very spiritual. But I started punching him in the face and then someone shouted the coach is coming so I had to release this guy he had a blood coming out of his nose and a, a nice big fat lip and uh, at the end of the, the the rugby session some of his friends said he wants to carry on the fight he looked at me and said no I don't we're done and from that day the next day I arrived at school this bully he came he ran and carried my bag to the classroom and he became one of my best friends for the rest of the year Sometimes bullies need to be confronted. And this is exactly what Paul did. He confronted this guy. And, and I love it here. He says, And now indeed the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. And immediately a dark mist fell on him, and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. So God was on Paul's side when he dealt with this bully. When you go and deal with the bully in love and with God by your side, he's going to stand with you. So take the Holy Spirit when you confront a bully. You know, if you're a bully and a giant, it's time to acknowledge it. I believe today that it's time to acknowledge I'm a bully. I've been bullying my wife. 
I've been bullying my children, or I've been bullying my maid or my garden boy or those people I employ. I've been bullying my neighbor across the road because he's a different color. I've been bullying the person at the till. Just wherever I go, I tend to be a nasty person. I believe today is the day that you need to acknowledge it, that you need to repent of it, to turn away. And if you need help, please look for help. You need help, go ask for help. Don't be ashamed to do that because you may lose your family. You may lose your job. You may lose your life. You may lose your sight. We don't know what it is, but it's time. I believe it's time today. It's not going to be easy, but it's possible through the love of Jesus and the help of the Holy Spirit. So in conclusion today, I've got a bit of a lengthy conclusion, um, but I'm going to get through it quickly. In Acts 14 verses 21, we see um, it says, And when they had preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra. Uh, and Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them, encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying, we must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. As a Christian, it's going to get tough. As a Christian, you already know it's hard. It's not going to become easy. The gospel that says, come to Jesus and everything's going to be okay, is a false doctrine. I know of someone who gave his life to the Lord and things just went downhill from there. So he's almost turned his back on God and said it was easier before I became a Christian. It's going to be tough. It is tough. But you know what? With God, all things are impossible. I want to encourage you today to keep going, to keep pressing in, to keep on going. Um, Jesus was bullied. Hmm. Jesus was bullied. Jesus was bullied so much so that he was thrown onto the cross, nailed there. He was whipped and beaten for us. And if our king was bullied, why do we think we are going to go through this life without being bullied? It's going to happen. The devil doesn't play fair. He doesn't play fair. It's going to be tough. But we need to encourage people, encourage one another to keep going through this hardship. There will always be giants to face, but with Jesus, we can face them with boldness. I love this. In Psalm 94, verses 16 to 23, if you want to quickly flip there. Psalm 94, verses 16 to 23. It says, who will rise up for me? He's, David is crying out to God. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers, against these bullies? Who will stand up? Who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? And then he calls out, unless the Lord had been my help, my soul would soon have settled in silence. If I say my foot slips, your mercy, O Lord, will hold me up. In the multitude of my anxieties with, within me, your comforts delight my soul. Shall the throne of iniquity, which devises evil by law, have fellowship with you? They gather together against the life of the righteous and condemn innocent blood. This sounds like bullies to me. But the Lord has been my defense. Amen. And my God, the rock of my refuge, he has brought on them their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. The Lord our God shall cut them off. God is our defense. God is our defense. He's looking after us and he will cut them off. Just trust God. He is a righteous God and he will fight for us. Jesus fights for us. In John 13, verses 35, it says, By this will all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. 
How is the world supposed to know that we are believers and followers of Christ if we bully one another? We need to love each other. We need to show more love to one another. God is love. And His children need to carry that love. We need to carry the fruits of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. If you're a bully, you know you're carrying the fruits of your God. And that is Satan. Because bullying is pure evil. As it says in 1 Corinthians 13, from verse 4, Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Love is amazing. Love is hard. Love should come naturally, though from the Father to us as believers. None of that has bully. There's no space for bullying in there. We need to start to respect and love one another. We need to start to forgive one another. We need to change. Saul was once a giant and a bully. But he met face to face. We learned a few weeks ago. He met face to face with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And then in that encounter, God took his heart and changed him. And he became a beautiful man. He became a loving man who went full out to save the lost. If you have a heart of stone, it's time to ask God to come in there and to soften it. It's time for you to allow God to, to mold you and to make you. He loves you and he wants you to love others. There's no room for bullying here. There's no excuse for bullying and if you have been a bully God wants to forgive you today God wants to heal you of that today if you've been bullied today if you've been bullied all your life for some reason God wants you to forgive God wants you to deal with that and I'm telling you if you're in a situation where your husband is bullying you you are not called to that you need to go and find find help if you're in a situation, children, if you're being abused by your parents, you're not called to live like that. Go and ask for help. You're not the only one. You need to go and speak out before it's too late. God wants to do a work in our community and in our lives. He wants to take the bullies out and he wants to bring in love. God wants to remove the bullies in this country and bring a country of justice and love where people can respect each other where people can honor the work of the hands of the people. God's heart is for us and not against us. And if you need prayer this morning, if you're at a place this morning where you want to give your life to God and say, God, have your way with me. There are numbers on the screen. Please give them a call. Don't leave it too late. Get on your knees and pray. Let's repent together. If there's anyone that comes to your mind today that you need to go and speak to and say, I'm sorry, then you need to do that. Because we want to be known as a people of love and not a people of manipulators and bullies. We want to carry the fragrance of Christ. So let's pray together. Thank you for being with us today. I hope it hasn't been too hard a word. And I, and I pray that God has spoken to you. Let us love one another. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. You're a good Father, and we thank you that you are our defense and that you fight for us. And Lord Jesus, I just pray for those who are bullies. I pray, Lord, that, um, that they come face to face with you today, that it's not too late, Lord, because how fearful it will be to one day face you if we haven't changed in this way. So, Lord, I just pray for them that they would repent, that they would turn from their wicked ways and they would seek you. And, Lord, that you would give them hearts of flesh and that they would make right with those that they have hurt. And, Lord, you would restore relationships. 
And Father, for those who have been bullied, maybe once, maybe many times, maybe those who are carrying scars of being bullied when they were just a child, Lord, I pray that you would help them to forgive and to release it. And Lord, I pray that you would come in and heal them of this pain right now. Thank you, Father. We love you and we ask that you be with us now for the rest of the day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning.